as I was viewing this painting I did of my friend, the author John Floyd, I got to thinking about how our mental attitude towards what we do and who we are can either aid in our growth as artists or sabotage our efforts. I think the biggest disappointment I have whenever I look back at my old portfolio pieces is how I see them now as opposed to how I saw those pieces back then. I've had a pretty amazing career. Right now I'm the art director for the American Spectator magazine. 25, 30 years ago I couldn't have imagined even submitting my work to them, let alone being their art director. I mention often that I work in the movie industry. I've worked on movies with industry heavyweights like Malcolm McDowell and Don Fauntleroy. Most recently, I worked on a film with David Duchovny. I've also worked with opera greats like Kristen Chavez, and before the pandemic, I was the artist-in-residence at the Mississippi Governor's Mansion, and I illustrated a historical book and memoir with Governor Phil Bryan, which was published by the University Press of Mississippi. Am I telling you all this to brag? No, I'm really not, because... Had I known 25, 30 years ago what I know now, I would have been working with people like I just mentioned far sooner. For some people, their pride gets in the way. They refuse to take jobs they be believe beneath them and thus rob themselves of many opportunities. For others, they rob themselves of those same opportunities because they fail to put themselves out there for fear of failure or rejection. I tend to be in the latter category. Now, could my work 25, 30 years ago have gotten me the jobs I do now? No, of course not. But it could have gotten me in the door of a lot of places a lot faster. And then I could have been working with these people far sooner. To give you an example, years ago I had a friend who was a very well-known illustrator. I was a portrait painter at the time and making a living at it, but I really wanted to illustrate. So I visited his studio and asked him to assess my work. He was very kind, but also very honest. He said, you need to improve your painting skills. You're a good portrait painter, but the ideas that you have for illustration and the skills that you have in your drawing far exceed what you're able to paint. Well, now that hurt a little bit, but it gave me the inspiration to focus on what I needed to do, take what was already good painting skills and improve them even further. Of course, now today I'm an, I'm an illustrator. I've also dealt with naysayers. When my son first wanted to start a movie production company 15, 18 years ago, I had a friend who worked in the television industry. He told me there was no way an independent could come in and compete in the film industry. He said where he worked, they had camera lenses alone that were over $50,000 a piece. There was just no way an individual could compete with them and their resources. Well... We can see where that went. Today, the industry is virtually dominated by independent filmmakers. We also had a friend of a friend who was a well-known movie producer in Hollywood. He had left Mississippi and gone off to make his fame and fortune in Hollywood. Well, he was very discouraging. He said Hollywood was a snake pit. There was no way anyone could leave Mississippi and go work in the film industry today the way he had done it back 35, 40 years ago. Well, I hate to be ugly, but <laughs> what a jerk. To stomp on the dreams of a young person so cynically, I, I just can't imagine. Well, I'm ashamed to say that I was pretty discouraged, but I didn't know the industry at the time. But my son, God bless the fervor and passion of the young. He said, no way, Dad. I've got friends with handy cams who are making real movies right now. So I said, okay, this is your dream. You want to be a director. I'll support you any way I can. I loaned him some money for equipment. 
not $50,000, but more like about $1,500, and then assisted him on shoots whenever I could. Long story short, today my son is a director, producer, and executive producer. He shot movies and commercials all over the world, and the list of stars he's worked with is more than I can name. For me, I'll tell you, every time I've put myself out there, whether it be in fine art, illustration, television, or film, the success I've achieved has been truly remarkable, in spite of the fact that at the time, I really had a lot of doubts. So, I guess what I'm trying to tell you is, do the best work you can, try and find someone who can help you assess your work, be prepared to deal with some naysayers, but then put it out there. Put it and put yourself out there. You're going to fail. It's inevitable. But failures are good. They can be your best teachers. There have been plenty of books written on the subject. The motivational speaker and author Wayne A. Root even wrote a book about it. He wrote The Joy of Failure, How to Fail Your Way to the Top. And that's what you have to do. Turn your failures into stepping stones to success. Now, there are many other books out there like that. I'm not necessarily trying to endorse any one particular self-help guru. I'm just suggesting that there are a lot of principles out there and a lot of possibilities out there that you need to consider before you give up on your dreams. If you've enjoyed this episode of The Arthropologist, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more episodes like this, think about subscribing. I'm Bill Wilson, and I'm The Arthropologist.